All right. So 2-5, we just finished a whole bunch of those, part one. Basically, part one, those seven or eight questions are almost all those graphs when we take that exam next week. Part one is basically section 2-5, you know, seven or eight graphs, moving them, twisting them, fiddling with the equations, all that kind of stuff. All right, so 2.6, really important section, challenging section as well. Um, how do we do it? So they're going to give me, uh, first off, they're going to talk about the graph x squared minus 7, which you know quite easily now. What does x squared minus 7 look like? x squared is a U-shape, and what's the minus 7 going to do to it? Down 7, right? That minus 7 is a y effector, and y has a normal natural effect. It's not an x thing. It's not a right-left thing, huh? It's going to go down 7. It's a U-shape down 7. And what they're going to ask me on this question, the point of this question is to say, here's the origin. Here's the graph. Y equals x squared minus 7. What's the point on that graph that's closest to the origin? That's what we want to find. Interesting question. We haven't answered questions like that before. It's a whole different kind of animal. What point, if you're a little person walking around on the, uh, on the graph, at what point are you closest to the origin? That's the question. You might guess somewhere right around here. And you're right. It is somewhere right. There's, and there's actually symmetrically the same point on the other side. There's one point on each side that's actually the closest to the origin. It's around, sort of, it's not exactly the middle, but sort of around there. We're going to find it with a graphing calculator. I hope you have your graphing calculator with you, but it's a whole process, but we're not ready right now. So we have like a million steps, for, not a million. We have a few steps before we're ready. But that's where we're eventually going to go. Eventually, we're going to get this function. Well, we're going to get that function. <laughs> but where did I come up with that function? That's what I'm going to show you. We're going to take that function. We're going to type it into y1. For a graphing calculator, graph it and find the minimum because closest means minimal distance. That's what closest means. So let's do that. How do we do that? Well, the first thing we need is we need a formula for the distance from 0, 0, the origin, to some point x, y, could be any point, on the graph y equals x squared minus 7. We need the distance. We need the distance formula. And, of course, you all remember it perfectly from your algebra days, right? Probably a few of you do remember it. The distance formula is the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. For sure, put that on your 3 by 5 card for the exam on next week, uh, next Thursday. So there's the distance formula. My two points are 0, 0. This is my x1, y1, and x, y. So this will be my x2, y2. It's just simply x, y, and 0, 0. You could switch. It doesn't matter. You could call the 0, 0 x2, y2 and the other one x1, y1. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what order. So then the distance between the origin, 0, 0, and the point x, y is 0 minus x squared. 0 minus y squared. Good so far? <coughs> right, I just plugged in. 0 for x1, 0 for y1, x for x2, y for y2. Distance formula. It's kind of like the slope formula, you know, difference of y's, difference of x's. But they're sideways and they're squared and they're added. The order doesn't matter. If you think, well, is it x2 minus x1? Remember, the order of subtracting only changes the sign, so if you square it, it doesn't matter. I say that too quick? Right, think about numbers, right? 7 minus 3, is that different than 3 minus 7? Yeah, this is 4 and this is minus 4. So if you're squaring it, it doesn't matter. It is 16 either way. So you could write this x2 minus x1 squared is the same thing. You see that? Because it only changes the sign to change the order of subtraction. And since we're squaring it, who cares about the sign? It's going to be positive, right? So don't sweat it. If you want to write this x2 minus x1, great. Makes no difference. Not the same for the slope. The slope formula matters because those aren't squared. So, right? So you have to be consistent on the slope. Right, too much. I don't have time for talking about all that. All right, so let's move on. So let's keep going with this thing. Distance then. Distance equals, where were we? Square root of 0 minus x squared 
plus 0 minus y squared. So that, it was, so let's clean that thing up. That's just going to be x squared plus y squared, right? The, the negative, you know, just negative x squared, negative y squared. Good so far? Mm -hmm. Now, what they're going to say, we'll get back to the question. They're going to say express the part A. Part A says only in terms of of x. They don't want any y. They want us to get rid of the y. How do we do that? Well, we use this. Because remember, this point x, y that we're talking about from the origin is on the graph y equals x squared minus 7. So if a point x, y is on the graph y equals x squared minus 7, that means its y value is equal to its x value squared minus 7. So I could come back over here and go, oh, this point isn't just any old point x, y. It's a point x, y on this equation. So I could plug this in right there. Does that make sense? So the distance is square root of x squared plus x squared minus 7 squared. y squared. And then I just need to FOIL that out and gather like terms. And I'll get that equation. Then we're going to put that into y1. For graphing calculator, we're going to graph it. So x squared, x squared minus 7, x squared minus... You've got to write two of those, right? You can't just make that x to the 4th minus 49. Is everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Right? I always tell you, my daughters did that all semester long in pre-calculus until about the last month. They, well, yeah, but last month they stopped doing it. Mm -hmm. They always did that. And I always said, no, nope, still not true, girls. Right? So this is the time to weed that out of your system. So you can't, you can't do that. You have to write two of them. So come on down here. x squared and then... Foil that, x to the fourth, minus 7x squared, minus 7x squared, plus 49, and what do we got now? This is x to the fourth, and this is 1x squared, minus 7, minus 7, so minus 14, uh, minus 13x squared. Okay with all that. So 1 minus 7 minus 7, 1 minus 14 is minus 13. So there we go. Hopefully that's what I got on the other page. Yes. Good. So you want to put that into Y1 and graph it. So put that into Y1 now in your graphing calculator. I'm going to go grab mine down the hall. So let me get this on first. So get that. type that into Y1, and we will graph it and find the minimum. Doing, you guys getting that? So put that into Y1. So 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 we have Y1 equals the square root. What was it? X to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 49. And remember that was distance equals, right? Distance. Oh yeah, I'm not on that screen. <laughs> So um, it's going to be the W. Let me go back here for you. So it's uh, so it's distance. It's distance. So we put y one in, and remember, don't don't ever forget the y value is distance. So with that little graph we just got in our screen, it kind of does a thing like this, a W kind of thing. Remember, the x axis is just x, no big deal. The y axis is what distance. Remember, the y1 is distance. This is distance equal. This all came from the distance formula. So the y values on this graph are distance values is what they are. So what are we trying to find? Minimum distance. Minimum y, because distance is y. Where's the minimum y? Right here, and then there's another one right here. Just, just find the positive one. Just find that one. That's going to be minimum distance. That's going to be the point... Who's admitted, you know, going back to the original, 
What's, what's tricky on this is you've got to keep two graphs in your mind at the same time and understand what they're both saying. This is the graph y equals x squared minus 7, the original, right? And we're trying to find the point who has lowest distance from the origin, right? It's like, for example, it's certainly not that point. That point's pretty far away from the origin. It's something around in here that has closest minimum distance from the origin. That's the point we're trying to find. Now, that point has an x and a y value on the graph. The x value will match the x value on the other graph, this graph, but the y values will not because the y values on this graph are distance. They're not y as in y on the original. We'll talk more about that. Careful with the two y's. They're di the, but just, just remember this. On this graph, y values are distance. They're not, they're not normal y values. They're distance. They're distance. So anyway, find that point. You know how to do it with the minimum, maximum thing, right? You hit um, second calc. It's on the TI. Casio's even easier. Second calc, and then you got to do the left, right thing, right? Left, you know, go left of it, hit enter. Go right of it. Oh, I forgot. Second calc and then min. Minimum. Second calc, minimum. Then left, enter, right, enter, guess, enter. I'll just say on it, enter. Right, so i uh, show you back on the thing here. So um, go to, so I hit, I'm going to hit second calc. Come on down. This is where I sent, I sent you YouTube on this. So if you have any trouble, I'll do what I can because uh, hit minimum like that. And then see on the TI, it says, give me left of it. Give me some spot. Now, where I'm trying to find this spot right here. Right, I'm trying to find that spot. So I'm going to go somewhere just left of that spot. So there, that's good enough. Whatever, that's left of the spot. Hit it. Remember, because you're trying to get the calculator to zone to search it. Calculators are stupid. They don't know nothing. All they do is plug in numbers super fast. That's all technology. They just, it's just fast. I always call it stu uh, stupid fast friend. That's what technology is, right? They're stupid in the sense that they don't understand graphs. They don't know nothing, right? If you don't put the right window, they won't show you anything. You're like, calculator, there's nothing on this screen. It doesn't know. It's just doing what you tell it to do. It's stupid. It's fast. That's the beauty of technology. It's lightning fast. It's a friend. It always obeys. That's my definition of friendship. <laughs> Obey me. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. But anyway, maybe I should use different words there. Friendship or dictionary. Anyway, I can't tell now. <laughs> so hit enter. So right bound. So left bound, enter. Right of it, enter. And then go on it. Close as you can. It doesn't matter. It just, that just tells calculator version. So it's searched in there. Boom. 2.5. I think it's rounded to two places. 2.55. So I'm getting x equals 2.55. So I went left of it enter, right of it enter, then best you can to go on it. it. Really, that third time, you can just hit it. You can go left of it enter, right of it enter, just hit enter a third time. It'll go. It doesn't. You don't have to even move it for the third time. 2.55. I think all they want is the x value. That's the x value of the point closest to the origin. In fact, that is back on this original graph. At over 2.55, and I don't know what the y coordinate is. You might say, no, no, it was there. It was on the screen, Mr. Aaron. It was that, is that one. It's not. That's what I'm telling you. It's, 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 not, it's not this y coordinate 2.598. That's distance. That's how far the point is from the origin. That's not y coordinate of the point. Obviously, it's positive, right? Right? Look back, look back to the, whoops, I keep shifting between the graphs here. Look back to the original graph. The actual y coordinate is certainly negative, isn't it? It's positive x, negative y. It's not positive, whatever that was, 2.598. That's distance, remember? What you're getting on your calculator is x value distance, not x, y. So anyway, they're not even asking for the y on this one, so who cares? I won't even bother to find it. They just want the x. We got it. Oh, I skipped parts b and c, didn't I? Part b and c are simple. They just want you to plug zero into that distance function. Is that okay? I just wave my hands about that. Just plug in zero into the distance function, plug in one into the distance function. Once you've got that distance function, they just want you to warm up and start to see what the thing even is. Right, if you plug in zero, maybe, maybe I should do that. So I just wave my hand. So part A, distance form, so I mean part B and C, uh, X equals zero, X equals one, B and C. Okay, yeah, so I skipped part B. So we had the distance form the square root of X to the fourth minus 13 X squared plus 49, right? Uh, right, and they say, part B says, X is zero. Plug in zero. So you just plug in zero, plug in zero. You get distance is square root of 49, which is 7. What is that telling us? That's saying if X is zero, what, what point on the graph, the u shape, the original u shape graph, X squared minus 7, has X value zero? Where is that? X value zero. Well, it's right here. It's right there. 
That's x equals 0. And what's the coordinates of that point? Over 0, down 7. How do I know it's down 7? Because the graph is down 7. So how far is that point from the origin? 7. That's what the distance formula just told us. We plugged in 0. We said at x equals 0, how far is the point from, what is the distance? It told us 7. Right. That's true. And when I plug in x equals 1, that means if I go over here to like x equals 1, it'll tell me how far away that point is from the origin. That's what they did in part C. Anyway, we're, we just did the hardest part, part D, and we're done. We got the answer to part D. All they want is the x value. They don't even want the y value. We don't know what it is. We don't care. That's all they want. Good on that? That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Make sure you do that on your graphing calculator and actually do the minimum function. Remember, this is the mistake that sometimes people make on the uh, test who haven't learned to use their graphing calculator. Well, it really is a skill. you got to practice with it. They, some people think they can just move the cursor around. And just go, yeah, I just move it around until it's on there. I don't need all that fancy stuff. No, 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 that's just an estimate. That's just an estimate. That's not exactly right. And on the exam, um, you'll see on the practice exam, what I'll do, to because I'm, you know, my job, I'm not trying to be mean, but my job is to make sure you're really learning this stuff. I'm giving my stamp of approval at the end that you're ready for calculus. I'll put answer A, 2.54. Answer B, 2.55. Answer C, 2.56. You got to be right on the money. That's how I'll know you really use the graphing calculator faithfully, right? So there's no just moving the cursor around. Come see me; be glad to help you with all that. But that will distinguish whether you know what you're doing on that, right? You got to really, you got to really know that. So um, okay, let's move. All right, try that one. The I got you, I got you the answer there already. The um, it's same kind of thing, distance formula, all that kind of stuff. But it's distance. And we're talking about the graph is the square root of x graph this time. Uh, but, but we're not talking about the origin. That's the only real difference. Well, it's a different function, but we're talking about the point 1, 0. Over 1, up 0. So they're saying find the point on the graph, square root of x, that is closest. Find the point x, y on the graph y equals square root of x that is closest to the point 1, 0. Instead of the origin, we're doing 1, 0. So try that one. So same thing, write the distance formula, you know, just like we did last time. That's all the same. So distance square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared This is our x1, y1. This is x2, y2, or vice versa. Doesn't matter. So get your distance function. I've already got it there. There's the answer. See if you can get that when you work everything out. Then, then you've got to plug in y equals root x. This will be easy, a little bit easier. It won't be quite so much foiling and like term stuff. It'll be a little cleaner. You guys enjoying this stuff? I like this material. I think it's fun. I think it's kind of cool. We can find the closest point. You go, and this gets you ready. This is prime in the pump for calculus. In calculus, you'll do this by hand by something called the derivative. That's what the derivative does is find minimum things, minimum, maximum things. But we're doing it with the graph and calculator right here, but it's just getting you ready for the ability to do it by hand. All right, so x1 minus x2. So that'd be x minus 1 squared. Good so far, right? x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2, just y minus 0, squared. Good so far. So, um, I'm going to, this is, remember this is x minus 1, x minus 1. Don't do like my daughters and just square those, write two of them, right? Parentheses, you got to write two of them and foil that out. And this will be y squared here. And now, what do you plug in for y? square root x. So remember what we do. We always do that and then we plug in the function because that point x, y isn't just any point x, y. It's on the graph y equals root x. 
So the y value of that point equals the square root of the x value. So we can plug that in. So we get what? This will be x squared minus x minus x plus 1, right, when you FOIL this, plus y squared. And what is y squared? It is going to be root x squared because y is root x. Is that okay so far? Am I going too quick? Good. And then just gather like terms. What's the root of x squared? That's just x, huh? So this is going to be x squared minus x minus x plus 1 plus x. That's just plain old x. And so, what is all that? I'm kind of running out of room. What does all that make? Well, come over here. That's uh, x squared minus x minus... Well, one of these minus x's cancels one of those plus x's, huh? Minus x plus 1, yep, there it is. We got the distance function. Good? There, plug it in your calculator, put in for y1, that distance function, and hit the graph button. See what you can see. Put that in. Graph it and find the minimum. that good so you get the at the y value there so so here on number two I'm getting y1 which is distance remember distance equals the square root of x squared minus x plus one is that what it was yeah minus x plus one right and so I just graphed it on my calculator and I got a graph that kind of goes like well I didn't draw it so well um, there, there it is well doesn't look at all like the picture I just drew over here so there's what I got. Y'all getting that? I'm, my window's still negative 10, positive 10, negative 10, positive 10, which has been working so far. In a minute, it won't at all. And I want to show you one of those when it doesn't because that's really important. So the minimum looks like it's just a little bit to the right of the origin, huh? So anyway, find the minimum. Hit second calc. Come down to minimum. It says go left of it, right of it. So go left of that middle. Hit enter. Go right of that middle. Hit enter. So those arrows it's putting above, it's saying I'm going to search in that zone. Right, then just go towards the middle a little bit and hit enter. And there it is, 0.4, nine, 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 nine. So what's, what's the calculator doing there? 0.4, nine, 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 nine. The calculator doesn't know that's 0.50 right in the money. It just plugs numbers fast. It doesn't know nothing. That's 0.50. It's a half. It's right on the money. If you do calculus, do the derivative, it's exactly a half. Calculator doesn't know that. Calculator's just plugging in numbers super fast. 0.50. There it is. That's the place that is closest. If you go back to our graph, at 0 0.50, that will be closest to the point one zero. At over a half a unit, that's the closest point on the graph, root x, to the point over one zero. Is that good? We good with all that? Questions? I want to get to the ones that are... Uh, you don't even have to do the calculator, but the equation's tricky. Equation's not easy. So, all right, so they give me, um, they want me to, it's a bunch of talk, blah, 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 find the area of the triangle. So you guys know the area of a triangle formula. What's the area of a triangle? Just, to, I mean, just the basic one that we use most of the time. What's the area of a triangle? Half base. Half base times size. Yeah, put that on your 3 by 5 card if you're not sure that you'll remember it. Half base times size, totally. That's right. Because um, a triangle is half a rectangle. Right? If you take a rectangle and you go like that, right? that's where we get the half, right? Okay, so now... Now, let's think for a minute about base and height, maybe deeper than you've ever thought before about base and height. If I was to measure my height, take a tape measure and go diagonally down to the ground. Diagonally. Hey, I'd be ready for the NBA. I'd be like eight foot, eight and a half feet tall. But that's not height, is it? Height means straight down to the ground. Right? I'm breaking the height rule if I run the tape measure diagonally down to the ground. So, if you think about it, height means hitting the base at 90 degrees. That's how you measure something's height or some person's height. You take the tape measure straight down to the ground, not at an angle, not at another angle, right? At 90 degrees, straight down to the ground. So base and height, by definition, must be 90 degrees to each other, or it's not height, right? So when we use base and height in the area for, uh, triangle formula, that means we've got to have two sides that hit at 90 degrees. Which two sides do that? 
Well, this could be height and that could be base or vice versa, but it's not this diagonal side. <laughs> you with me? It's the two that meet at 90 degrees. And you can so you call this one base and side. It doesn't matter which ones you call base and height. You can always turn the triangle around. Who cares? But it's got to be two sides that hit at 90 degrees to truly be base and height, doesn't it? All right. So what? Well, so it's a half base times height. So looking at that picture, remember, this is the point X. This, this point here is the point X, Y. What does that mean? Be real clear on rectangular coordinate system. What does that mean? That means over x, up y. That means this is over x and this is up y. Of course, you know that. That's what any point means. x, y, over x, up y. So what? That means the base is x and y is the height. Huh. So the base is x and the height is y. It's a half x, y. And what's the last thing we always do? We don't leave y. Remember, you always want to get it all in terms of x, right? You never, you don't want two letters. So how do you always, you've seen the pattern on these things? How do you always get rid of the y? Go back to the original equation. y equals x to the sixth. Plug it in there for y. One half x, x to the sixth. So that's a half x to the seventh. We're done. That's all they want. They don't want any graphing or anything more on that one. Just a half x to the seventh. We found an equation. Well, what is that? That's the equation for the area of the triangle at any point x, y. What I mean is, that's probably... Not very helpful just to say it that way. That means like anywhere you want to go, you want to stop up here, there's a triangle formed there. And the area to there is that formula. Depending on what, however far your x is, if your x is over 3 or whatever. Yeah, I do. I know it. So um, there it is. So um, they're talking about area of a rectangle. So area. What's the area of a rectangle? Rectangle. Yeah, just length times width. You can call it base and height, whatever you want to call them. It's the two sides, totally. So we have a rectangle there. It's the two sides. Now, remember, again, notice they're giving me the point right here. Let me change the color, be easier to see. They're giving me the um, point right here that is x, y on the u graph. It's also the corner of the box, right, which means this is over x, up y. That's what x, y coordinate means, over x, up y. So what? Well, that means the width of this rectangle is x, and the length or height or whatever you want to call it is y. One side's x, other side's y. So it's just x times y. Isn't it? And we never leave y. What do we always do? Grab that, plug it in. So it's x times 36 minus x squared. Distribute 36x minus x cubed. That's how I got that right there. Good so far. So that's the area <clears throat> of any rectangle. That formula will give you the, plug in any x value you want. It'll tell you the area of the rectangle formed under the U shape at that x value. Right? This is an upside down U shape, isn't it? And we're saying we're going to stop at some x value and go straight down and make a rectangle. We want to know the area of that rectangle. Well, there's the formula for the area of the rectangle formed at any x value underneath that U shape. That's what that is. Okay, well then what's this domain question? I'm not going to ask you that on the test. Not on the test. I think it's a dumb question. Um, it's real picky. But don't worry about it. It's 0, 6. The reason it is to just, you know, just remember it. Make a note of it. It's probably exactly the same on your homework. Write it down. 0, 6. It's just, I'll tell you why, but we don't got time. Um, it's just because, um, we're, first off, they said, pause, well, they said, positive x-axis. So they don't want negatives first off. So that's why it starts at zero. And you can't be zero right in the money because you'd have no area at all. Right? If x was zero, there'd be no area at all. So they, so they do parentheses zero because you wouldn't, there would be no box if you had x zero. There'd be no shape at all if x was zero. So, and then you've got to go up to six. Why can't you go past six? Because if you plug in six here, this thing hits at six. I don't know if you can tell. It hits at, hits at six. If you plug six in for x there, it's 36 minus six squared. It's zero. So it hits at six, which means it would close down. The box would have no height at that point. So that's it. I'm not going to answer that on the test. And then finally, part C says graph it. This might be a good one to graph. I know we've only got seven minutes, but I want to show you one of those that, that graphs badly so I can show you how to handle it when it does that. So put that one in real quick. Put that one into your calculator, 36x, and for y1. So they do want me to graph this one and find the minimum thing. 36x minus x to the third and graph. I think this is the one that does it. Yeah, good. This does a bad graph. Let me help you with it. So you guys with me on this? Put this in for y1 right here. This 36 
x minus x cubed. Put it in for y1. I'm still negative 10 to positive 10, negative 10 to positive 10. When I hit graph, I got crazy graph. What number is this? Number 4? Yeah, number 4. So number 4, I put in y1 equals 36x minus x cubed. And I graphed it, and I got crazy graph. Let me show you. If, you, if, you're, if your window's like mine, negative 10, positive 10, negative 10, positive 10, you get, oh, <laughs> there we go. Thinking, what was that? You get that, right? Craziness. No, what are you going to do? This is going to happen probably on the test. I don't remember exactly if I put one exactly like this. But I know in years past, I've had many a student come up to me and go, Taryn, middle of the test. I'm graphing, and I'm, I'm just getting craziness. And I always say, I so wish you had come and talked to me about this yesterday or the day before, or any of the last month, I would have done everything to show you how to do that, but now it's test time. Now I need to know whether you've learned how to use that graphing calculator. Actually, I think I've just learned whether you've learned how to use that graphing calculator. So you've got to, this is what you've got to learn. This is the real skill. This is what you've got to spend time learning to do. It's not, it's not remember, they're stupid. Calculators are stupid. It doesn't know it's helping me not at all. So what do you got to do? You've got to adjust the window. How do you adjust the window? One of the great things, I learned about a year ago, I never learned before, the table button is great. For there's, some of you guys are probably good with zooming in and out. I don't know about all that. There's probably a great way to do it that way too. Great if you learned that already. I do the table thing. I'm going to hit second table because when I hit table, I see the, the values and I, and I start to see where it's doing the numbers. I go, oh, look at that. It's up at 35, 64. Look, they're all way above 10. I'm only going up to 10. No wonder I'm not seeing much. I'm only going up to 10. So I got to go up to like, no, what, what, what should I make my Y values go up to so I can cover this? About 100. How about 100? Right? I want to go to 100 because that will cover all the 80s and stuff. So let your Y value go to 100. Now, come back to the graph for just a minute and think logically about X. What, what, what is X here again? You always got to keep one foot in reality when you're doing math. What, what is X? Well, X is a position on the X axis. So we're, only, we're not doing negatives. In fact, we're only doing x's from 0 to 6, remember? So I should, make my, I should change my window. My x min should be 0. My x max should be 6. And my y, now what is y? What is y again? Y is the area. Can area be negative? No. I shouldn't have any negative y values. I should let y start at 0 and go to looks like 100 because the y on the table I showed you looks like it's going up to 100. So use a little bit of logic and, a, and, and mainly the table feature to show you where the calculator's putting things. Then you go, oh, okay, so go my window. I'm going to go 0, 6, 0, 100. Distances, areas, they're never negative. We shouldn't be doing any negative y values on distances and area graphs. Oops, did I do something bad? Yep, you put minus instead of negative. 0, 6, um, 0, I uh, reversed those, didn't I? There we go. 0, 6, 0, 100. Beautiful. We want to find the max. I'll let you do the rest from there. i got to get on to the last problem. So that'll graph it perfectly. But, uh, we did a good job on other stuff. All right, so here we are with three minutes. And, oh, it's not even on the screen. And the box. So number six. I skipped number five. It's the same kind of thing. Here's number now. Number six is different. And we've only got three minutes, but let me cover it with you. So basically... Um, we're going to take this piece of carbon. This is a very useful question. FedEx, UPX, uh, UPX, UPS, big, big bucks to them. If you can take a piece of cardboard, take this piece of cardboard and cut squares out of the corners, then fold them up into a box, no top. This is just going to be a box. I guess you get the top somewhere else. I don't know. Anyway, the box with no top. Everybody seeing what's happening? You're going to cut out those four squares from the corner. You're going to fold up, fold up, fold up fold up, and it'll make a box, right? Now, did you know there's different ways from the same piece of cardboard you can cut bigger squares or smaller squares out of the four corners, and that'll make different types of boxes, and that box will hold different amounts. You can actually make more volume or less volume, same piece of cardboard, depending on how wisely you make the cut. So, for example, if you cut just a tiny little bit out of the corners, then you'll have a big base but it won't be very tall, right? Because how much you cut, that'll become height when it's folded up, won't it? Mm -hmm. You guys all picture that? Mm -hmm. How far in you cut, that'll, when it's folded up, that'll become height. So if you cut in further, it'll fold up to be a taller box, but then the base has gotten smaller. So there's this give and take 
between taller box but thinner base, smaller base, and then flatter box, wider base. We, what if you're UPS, FedEx, and you want to say, I got to ship stuff, maximum volume. I want that box. I want to use that piece of cardboard and hold the most I can. Now, it, it might, you know, if they can make a, they can cut a box in the wisest way to hold more stuff, might only save them pennies on that particular piece of cardboard, but they ship, I don't know how many millions of packages every day, a few pennies every box, that's big dollars in the end. They hire math people, science people, engineering people to answer these questions for them to do this kind of thing efficiently. So, we need a volume statement for the volume that happens when you fold that up. Well, how do you do that? Well, we need, we need the height first off. What's the height of the box going to be? It's just X. Do you all see that right there? The little X amount right here and right here, those, those fold up and become height, don't they? What's the width of the box right here? 18 minus 2X. Do you all see that? It's 18 from outer edge to outer edge. This is X, and this is X, so the middle must be outer edge to outer edge, 18, take away the two inner amounts, right? It's 18 outer edge to outer edge, subtract X, subtract X. Inner to inner is 18 minus 2X, so this is 18 minus 2X. What's this width right here? Same thing, because again, it's 18, so from there to there is again 18 minus 2X. This is 18 minus 2x there to there, there to there, and x is the height. So what's volume? Length times width times height. Three dimensions. So it's 18 minus 2x, 18 minus 2x times x. So we're out of time, so you just got to foil all that out, and you'll get whatever I got, whatever I got. Did I show you the answer?